This garden over here is kind of a absolute masterpiece. I think I was probably here quite some time before I even saw this side of the building. This was the more private side of the house when, when I was uh, working here. And since I was working and in the military, I wasn't uh, privy to a lot of garden parties. Yeah, I remember the first time I saw this property, I was completely blown away. When I was a, a kid growing up in Southern California, I saw a few Spanish influenced properties and they were always my favorite. I'd spent a year in the military before I, or not a whole year, but a good, a good portion of a year in training and everything. And so when I got out here, it was like heaven on earth to be away from Washington and just come to my home, California. And it was quite an experience. But the first time I saw it, I just thought, uh, uh, I want a house like that someday. Uh, I haven't achieved it quite yet, but I'm still hoping. Growing up was uh, a hodgepodge for our family because my parents moved a lot. We lived in Las Vegas, we lived in La Habra, we lived in Riverside. I got used to moving and used to meeting new people. It wasn't until high school that I actually uh, was able to kind of lock into a community. My grandmother was teaching me how to draw and paint, just kind of by osmosis. She didn't give me a lesson. She just had me paint next to her after school. And she'd pick me up and take me to her house uh, for two or three hours every evening or often, oftentimes in the evenings. She'd be painting, so I got a piece of canvas and some paint. I just was dying to learn how to do what she was doing. So uh, by her just kind of passively letting me participate, I was excited about it. And I, I can't ever remember a time that I thought that uh, she was giving me a lesson. You know, that takes a kind of a special kind of wisdom, I guess. When an adult engages with you and not as a child, it makes you feel more grown up. And that's probably what she did the best. She, she treated you like uh, a human being, uh, you know, like, a, like an adult rather than a, a, like a kid. At one point, when I had a show, uh, one of my first big successful shows, I sent a car for her to bring her friends down and she got out of the car holding up my very first painting that she had framed. A little embarrassing at the time, but uh, I'm glad it happened. It actually looked like something. <laughs> I showed promise. Each painting in, ends up being completely an original, though it's, it doesn't matter if you try to repaint something similar, it always ends up different. Nature provides a ton of variety in every shape, every shade, and it's natural to nature to be random and yet organized, beautiful random. And nature's just always been a huge part of my life. This area to me is fabulous. Quaint roadside towns like this are becoming more and more rare already. So I hunt them down. From my childhood, I was enamored with that from road trips with my dad and mom. So this is fun. I started painting on my boat. People started asking me what I was doing and I would tell them I'm drawing your boat. That kind of started my art career in a strange sort of way because I didn't have any money at the time. I started doing commercial work. I did Hawaiian Tropic for a little while. I was a cartoonist for a magazine called Chesapeake Boatman. And then I came back out to California and got some really lucky breaks and got in and out Burger. Well, I was working with uh, Rich Snyder. Uh, I would just happen to be sitting there one day and he said, would you give a shot at designing something that feels like Southern California? That's how the uh, palm tree 
still to this day what they use on the uh, on the cup. So he gave me a shot at the logo, and my logo ended up winning out my design. There had been a uh, a painting of a of a car going through the restaurant before I was involved, and. Uh, Rich really liked that idea and wanted me to take off with it. So I ended up doing a bunch of different designs for shirts and for posters and all kinds of stuff. That was the beginning of my commercial success, I guess you'd say. Real, you know, where I actually had enough money to buy a car or something like that off my art. I was a plein air painter for several years because I didn't have a studio. I didn't know I was different. This is a lifestyle. You have a purpose for doing what you're doing and travel and you can see tones out here that you can't get from a photograph. You have both of your eyes you work with rather than the one you have uh, through a camera. You end up with a, a lot more direct experiential side of painting. You can smell and feel and experience the place, which you don't do when you snap a photo and go and do a, a painting from it in the studio. Like right now, I can feel the temperature in the air and. Uh, the cars driving by and all of the things that are happening and if people drive in or drive out. Are you yeah, if you want to see, you're welcome to look. What's your name? Pat. Pat, I'm John. Mm -hmm. Nice to meet you. People's creative side, it comes out when they see a painter. Every, everybody likes to draw and paint when they're young. I think when they, they see you out like this, it touches them in some way. And, and here, they're not afraid to express it. Where are you from? Born and raised here. Ah. You have a beautiful place you live. I'm sure you know that. <laughs> Get the dust off so you can see it. Anyway, this is just a print of um, a poster that I did for their 40th anniversary. And you, can, you still see these in the restaurants uh, as posters. But this is a print done off the original, the, the 40s cars, and then uh, it reflecting it as a new In-N-Out Burger with the new logo from the old sign, new sign from the old sign with the new logo on it, and the reflection of 40 years of being in business because it was 40th anniversary. So teaching has become a fairly important part of my life now. I've been teaching now for about 15 to 18 years, somewhere in that range. And at first I just showed people how I painted. And then I realized that um, you really need to focus a little bit more on what they need specifically. Well, how's it going? It's going really, really well. Things are, <laughs> are moving along. How about for you? Yeah, I've got everything from professionals to beginners that I work with. I enjoy working with them all because they're all a unique set of problems. It's like playing chess with somebody. You make a move and then they make a counter move and the uh, idea is to get them all to where they can play well and uh, give them the tools that they need. And here's where you are in my mind. Uh, I, I'm looking at your work and, and you're, all you have left is the finest polish on the edges of the work, you know? so fun to watch uh, the progression of people's creative abilities come out when you hand them the tools. And that's what my reward is for teaching. That and they teach me how to paint better because they do things that I never would have thought of doing. So about 1971-72, I was coming into the end of high school. Every day when I was driving home from Indio to Palm Springs, I would see the military caravans going down the road. So I noticed them several times, never gave it any thought, except I thought, well, that looks like fun, you know, be on those tanks or be on that. After a couple weeks of uh, realizing that I didn't make enough money and my car was being repossessed, I walked into a military recruiter's office uh, just one day to find out what they paid to see if I could get a job within Two to three days of the initial testing, I was on a bus going up to Fort Ord in the Army. And uh, what a shock that was. And within about two weeks of entering basic training and realized that I had really made a serious mistake going into the Army, all of a sudden one day I got approached by one of my sergeants and he said, the test results had come back and I'd scored it in a fairly high 
percentage. And if you score in the upper two to three percent, that your name floats to the top for special assignment. And I got all kinds of offers uh, for special assignment, but the one that they offered me that I found the most attractive was I get to get out of the army, everything but pay grade, and I'd go to work for the executive branch of government is how they uh, described it, and I'd be traveling around the world. So that sounded like fun. I didn't exactly know what the executive branch was because I ditched a lot of high school. I didn't know I was going to the White House. I just knew I was going to Washington. Then one day, all of a sudden, somebody just showed up and uh, said, you're coming with me. Go upstairs, get all your stuff, and uh, here's a suit, put this on. And they took me to the airplane and flew me up to Washington, D.C., and that afternoon, I met President Nixon. So he uh, was embroiled at that time in Watergate. We worked the communications from uh, the radio side, which is called Crown Control, and it's a secure communications at the White House, like, um, all telephone and radio communications that are considered secure, including the red phone to Russia, uh, was all handled by my agency. The secret communications, the secure communications, was basically my job. My tenure with Nixon ended early, obviously, uh, but I had the opportunity to follow him out to San Clemente when he resigned. His house was really cool. All the people who uh, were very involved in the administration were out, you know, for the transition. It was interesting to watch from a, a point of view of a kid who, who doesn't usually get to be a fly on the wall in that type of a situation, but I got to do that. During the tapes and the pardon, it was negotiated that he would lose his WACA team. So I'd been requested by him and I would have stayed with him but instead I went back with President Ford, who was already, you know, active. And it was fun for me because I got to travel internationally a lot with President Ford. So by the time I was about 23, 24 years old, my, my term was up. So it was a lot of fun, but there was a lot of stress in the job because of the security level. You were scrutinized uh, very, very heavily with who you dated and everything you did was scrutinized. And I was never real good with scrutiny. At a certain point, I just decided it was a little bit much for me and I was getting close to my re-enlistment. So I went ahead and, uh, and checked out. So would you like to wander around a little bit over in the, the house side? We'd love to see yeah, the house. Okay. Is that okay? Sure. I didn't get to spend a lot of time in the house other than showing films or walking through. So I haven't even seen a lot of the house, but that living room area that... Is that where you'd show the films in the living room? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's where we, where we ran the projector. So the house is uh, protected in a statewide historical program, so it can never be basically changed or subdivided or anything. So it's, it's going to stay the same. I was working the night shift because we worked 12-hour <laughs> shifts. And I'm sitting at my, my board watching the communications uh, to take care of anything that happens. And I hear this sound that was so faint, I couldn't even hardly, I couldn't hear it today because I don't have that good of hearing. But it was him, it was Nixon, and he, was, he wanted me to show him a movie. And he had come out and he was trying to pound, knock on my <laughs> vault door, which didn't let sound in or out. And, and when I went and opened that, that uh, <laughs> door up to see who could possibly be out there. It was him standing there and he said, could, would you mind showing me uh, Patton? Uh, and, and so he came in and we sat in that little tiny vault oh my God. <laughs> door that I have my sleeping bag in. And he was very uh, approachable at that time. It's great that it's so similar to what it was. You, you really didn't change much. Well, here, we, yeah, the living room structurally is Decorating is totally different, but the structure is the same. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is a, probably one of the better views in the house, isn't it? Oh, yeah. No, this is great. So that's the gazebo that uh, Roosevelt spent time. Yeah, they, there's a stairway that goes down to the beach, and they carried him up the stairway. You guys want to take a little stroll around the property. Let's, let's head over this way. I've never been up in this office before. Should be fun to see. You can feel the history in here, can't you? 
Okay, no one, no one tell anybody I did this. <laughs> I'm the president for a minute. I never got to sit in the chairs, even in the Oval Office, I wanted to sit in that chair so bad when we were in Washington, but I finally got to sit in one of the chairs. <laughs> I got to answer the phones, that's about it. What a great opportunity to get to paint some of this stuff here. I think the house will be here for a long time, but access to it is a little bit more difficult to come by sometime. And uh, Mr. Herbert's really being kind to let us do this. Let me paint in here. I love this view of the house. Actually, I think I'm gonna probably paint this. It's got a, got a lot of color and the design is beautiful the way it leads, leads you into it. This is the full design now, taking us into the light right there. So that's my first thinking sketch for today. One of the problems I've got in this painting, I can see, is there's a lot of light on the path. So as the painting develops, it'll shadow the path a little bit more, and that's what I want. I want the building to be more lit and the path to be more shadowed. Since the sun's going down this way, I'll paint into the light rather than I've learned these the hard way. You paint where the light's getting worse and worse and worse and it just makes you speed up until you can't hold on to the painting anymore. Nothing like putting out fresh color. You gotta spin paint like you're a millionaire. I'm gonna use that red to key off of on the Bougainvillea. Wonderful color, and I can see how it relates to my shadow right there. I want room for those trees back there. So that roof is gonna occur right about there, a third of the way up the canvas. So at this point, I think I wanna move this building over a little bit, which is my, I found moving buildings at this point, it's a lot easier than moving them after you got all the color in there. The reason is, is the main building is the subject, you know, with the flowers interacting with it. And if I offset it just a little bit more from the center of the canvas, I think I'll get a more dynamic design out of it. There. Okay, now the house is where I want it. It looks like as the sun comes around here, I'm gonna get a little bit of color in this bougainvillea that's gonna get sunstruck. That's kind of exciting to a painter when things develop to be even better than you originally conceived. To uh, 
come back here into these gardens or at this house and paint is such a amazing experience. I never could have imagined when I was at the White House that this is what I would get to do for a living, much less that I would be getting to visit uh, this property again and paint right here. So quite something, a very magical place for me. When I come back to this property, I feel honored to have lived a life that gives me access to very special things like this property. And I have a story that's attached to it that's part of my life. It didn't define me, but it helped to define me. I knew that if I was hungry, I could draw something and I could get a dinner for it. That made a big impression on me. <laughs> I didn't need a bank account. Uh, you know, I didn't need a nice car. I didn't care about any of that stuff. But I needed dinner. I'm constantly handed opportunities that are very unexpected and yet everybody seems to want to let me do it it's almost like they hand me the keys to a jet and say you want to fly this <laughs> I'm like okay i wake up every morning and it's a new day I, and i'm born again and somehow i don't know if it's because we moved a lot when i was young or or because of those jobs that I got young, or what it was, but really there's only one direction I look, and that's out in front of me. 